In this video, we're going to talk about some of my highlights from this month's Power BI September 2022 update, including some updates to the mobile formatting options, information protection update, and the new cross-tenant dataset sharing. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we'll cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the first one I want to cover is the improvement that they made on the discoverability of grouping hierarchies. Now this feature is not new, and in fact, it's already been in Power BI for quite some time now, but it's not very easy to find because for you to implement it before this update, you have to sort of expand on your hierarchies, then you have to sort them by categories, and then you'll have to group them and then turning off the concatenation on the labels. Now in this month's update, by default, if you add categories or subcategories in your charts, Power BI will auto group these uh, for you. So giving you a better way to visualize your data. Summarize fields are now included to the column names when you add them to your tables. Now this one, I'm not so sure if it's a new feature as well because I've seen it before. So maybe they dropped this feature and then put it back. So basically when you add fields to tables in Power BI, it groups these values depending on the context. If you're not using measures, it will add a prefix on the name of the field to denote what the aggregation it's using. So maybe it's doing a sum or an average minimum or maximum. And this helps the users know the values are being aggregated and how they're being aggregated. And it seems that before this update, you just got the name, but you didn't really get an indication of what aggregation is being applied to that value. Now in this month, this should be enabled by default, but you can disable it as well in the options if you don't want this. Conditional formatting for individual days labels now work for visuals with legends. Now, this feature was released last month and I did cover it last month as well, but I explicitly mentioned that it didn't work with visuals that had legends where we just had values and the axis. But now you should be able to set individual conditional formatting for data labels with the legends as well. Just bear in mind that you have to reapply the conditional formatting rules if you want this type of behavior to take effect. Translations are now supported for composite models in Power BI datasets and analysis services. This basically means if you have any translations defined in your source, it will be exposed in the composite model, so table and column names will be translated to your user's language. Now, to be completely honest, I didn't actually know that this was possible. And in the past, I created a video to show how you can change the language of your Power BI reports. And this method might deprecate that video. So I'll see if I can cover this one in the future. The new mobile formatting options is now generally available in Power BI Desktop. This essentially allows you to format and style mobile-friendly versions of your reports without affecting the original report layout. This provides a lot of flexibility in terms of designing your reports for smaller screens without a lot of extra effort. There are new updates on information security this month. So if you're getting data from existing datasets in the service, your report will inherit any sensitivity labels in the dataset. This ensures that any data classification and protection set by your organization is applied to your reports coming outside of the service. You can now share datasets across tenants in the Power BI service. So what does this mean? Basically, if I work for company A and I want to share my dataset to company B so they can use it to build their own reports, previously that wasn't possible without being in the same tenant. Now with this new update, you can now share datasets to external users so they can use your datasets in their own tenant. And for me, this is really exciting news 
because it makes collaboration with external partners seamless while providing better governance to your own data. To enable this, first your organization needs to enable dataset access to guests, which can be enabled by the tenant administrator. If you want finer control over who in your organization can turn on data sharing to outside users, they can also set that restriction here. And then once that's done, you can find any data set you want to share published in the service. Just go to settings and then enable allow external sharing. This will ensure that your users that have access to this report can discover this data set even if they are external users. Lastly, you need to make sure that the dataset is shared to your guest user and has at least a build access to the dataset. Once that's all done, when they click Get Data from their own Power BI, under External Data, they will find the dataset they could use. From here, they can build composite models and mesh this with their own data to create their own reports. Lastly, you can now auto-generate reports of datasets in the Power BI service. This is especially helpful if you want to explore data or if you're a beginner and want to quickly build insights. From the Power BI service, you can choose auto-create reports on the create page. You can do this from the data hub too by selecting auto create on any data sets. And in the past, I actually created a video covering something similar like this where you can auto create a report. But the limitation with that method is that it only works with sources that have a single table value only. This new feature now works for typical data sets with multiple tables published in the service. And that's really it. So those were my highlights for this month's feature update. As usual, I didn't cover everything that was included in this update, only the ones that were interesting to me. If you want to read the full list of updates for this month, I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.